Welcome everyone. In the previous lecture we had seen a problem which was which involved a system that that had that could be in two possible states, states S1 and S2 and uh, there were certain actions available at each of these states and we designed policies that of, of both deterministic as well as random randomized kinds that were Markov, here was our a deterministic Markov policy and policies that were also history dependent. So, first so these were this was a randomized Markov policy and then we got to we, we altered the problem a little bit and then we got to also history dependent policies. So, these this was for example, a deterministic history dependent policy and here was a randomized history dependent policy. So, now what we will do is we will come we will come uh, from here to the next type of problem uh, where we, we would be asking ourselves how do we actually solve a problem like this. I mean how do we actually solve a stochastic control problem or a Markov decision process means what do, how does one actually find what the optimal policy is. Now in, the, in this case what we what we will do first is we will restrict ourselves to just Markov policies which means we will look for a policy that is optimal over the set of Markov policies for a particular problem. And what we will do is we will we will show that this, this kind of uh, a search for the uh, for the optimal Markov policy can actually be simplified greatly by using what is called the Bellman's optimality equation. Okay. So, we will we'll get to this in, uh, in a moment. So, what we will do now is uh, go back to the stochastic control type of formulation of the problem where you, if you recall we were looking for uh, we were looking for an optimal policy which was we were looking for an optimal policy. So, this pi was our policy which comprised of functions mu 0 to mu n minus 1 these were the decision rules and this was uh, we wanted that we, we are looking for a policy that is in the set of Markov deterministic policies. Okay. So, let me write this emphasize that by putting a, a d next to this. So, the policy has to minimize a cost and the cost that you get from a when you apply a policy pi to the problem is if is given by this expression. So, we, we, we had a cost which was the expectation of a terminal cost g n of x n plus the sum of the stage wise cost which was g k of of a of u k w k where sum goes from over from 0 to n minus 1. Now, u, u k itself because we have choosing a policy uh, which is Markov u k here is a function mu k of of x k. So, therefore, this cost can be written as equivalently as g n of x n plus sum from k from 0 to n minus 1 g k of x k mu k of x k comma w k. The expectation here is over all the things that are random in this problem. Now, since we are uh, we uh, since we have already put in the uh, the a particular policy which is deterministic the only thing that is random uh, in this problem are the is the noise that is given by 0 w 0 to w n minus 1. So, that is uh, that is the randomness in the problem. Now, this here is a cause that depends on two things first is the policy that we are applying. So, the, the dependence on the policy is clear it, it is here all the mu's are appearing in the in, in this expression. So, it depends so the cost depends on the policy. So, that is why the cost that we incur is is represented as j sub pi where pi is uh, you emphasize this pi here because we want to show that the policy uh, that the cost depends on the policy. The, the other dependence here is on the initial state. The initial state here is 
is x 0, x 0 is where the system starts from. Now that is uh, that uh, uh, so the policy also depends on uh, the, the, the cost also depends on x 0 right because where you start from would determine what kind of cost you would actually get. For example, in the inventory problem the amount of the, the total cost that you would incur depends on how much inventory you start off, uh, start off with to begin with right. It also depends on a bunch of other things say for example, the cost would depend on the time horizon also, the cost would depend on the kind of uh, the stage wise cost functions and the terminal cost functions and so on. But all of those are implicit here we are not we are not emphasizing their dependence in this particular expression. So, the problem of the stochastic control problem that we are faced with is to find what is the optimal policy in a certain class of policies. So, the class of policies we are as I said we are considering here is the class of Markov deterministic policies and there the problem now becomes to find the optimal cost, the optimal cost as a function of the initial state. So, j star of x 0 which you can say is the minimum over all policies in, a, in the class that we are considering which is the class of Markov deterministic policies. This is your stochastic control problem, it asks you to find what is the optimal Markov policy when, uh, uh, when you start off from a, from a certain state x0. Right? So, let us let us just see let us just dwell a little bit on what the complexity of a problem like this is. So, here as I have stated this problem is asking me to search over all possible Markov deterministic policies. Right? So, let us see how, how large uh, this, this set of Markov deterministic policies is and, and how, uh, how uh, you know how, how vast is this search. So, to do this let us look at let us say for example, the state space here uh, the state space that we are considering the size of the state space is, is b it's okay, some finite number is b. Okay. Suppose the, the, the number of actions available at each time step is the size, uh, so number of actions at each time step is, uh, so this here is the size of the state space. The number of actions available at each time step is suppose small a and let us assume this also is finite ok. This is the number of actions at each time step, each time or each decision epoch as you want to call it. And now suppose we have n which is your time horizon or number of decision epochs. So, question is what is the size of the set of Markov decision uh, Markov decision uh, the what is the size of the set of Markov deterministic policies. So, let us say, so the question is what is this? So, we can let us let us try to get an estimate of, of, of this, this particular quantity. See notice that at every time instant you have a choice of, of A actions a is the number of actions that you have at each time step ok. So, the number of actions here is a and you can be in one of b possible states. The system can be in one of b possible states and you have a choice of, of a actions. So, every decision rule can be decided once you tell me what action I am taking in each state right. So, there are b possible states and a possible choices for actions at each state 
So that it tells me that the number of number of decision rules. So number of decision rules at each each time is is actually a to the power b. The reason for this is because we have we have a choices for uh, uh, and uh, for each state and there are b states. So, there are you can this is a so you get a times a times a b times. So, that gives you the number 8. So, that gives you the number a to the power b. Since we have now since we have n time steps so that means the number of this is the number of decision rules at each time. So, since there are n time steps the number of policies is which is this is a to the power b to the power n ok. In other words a to the power b times n. Now let us do this uh, let us just run through this calculation and see how big this number could be. So, suppose a is 10 which is that means you have 10 possible actions ok and suppose you have uh, say let us say 5 possible states ok. So, b is 5 and suppose you the time horizon that you are considering is let us say let us say a time horizon is also 10 right. So, then what is a to the a raise to b times n well a raise to b times n then becomes 10 raise to 5 times 10 which is 10 raise to 50. This is the total number of Markov deterministic policies in this in this problem. So, you can see that this problem actually a simple problem with just 10 actions, 5 possible states and 10 time steps. This itself has a humongous number of Markov deterministic policies uh, for us to choose from. So, this problem that we have posed here which is asking us to minimize find the, the policy which minimizes this cost over the set of all Markov dis deterministic policies is, is essentially asking us to find the best policy out of a out of this set of 10 raised to 50 different policies right. So, this is this is clearly a very very complex problem ok. It is an a, it is it is uh, if if you were to approach this in the most naive possible way which is which is by listing out the uh, listing out all possible policies this would probably take you longer than you know the age of the universe uh, you know uh, to even to even solve. So, this is obviously a very very complicated problem. So, what we will do uh, what we will see in uh, in uh, in today's and in sub in the subsequent lecture is that that there is actually a way to simplify this by where we will we will we will actually use the structure of the problem the fact that there is an underlying Markov process going on that there is a cost which is additive and so on all of this will be exploited to uh, to reduce uh, to reduce the complexity of of search uh, of searching like this. Where, so, we in a sense we will not attack this problem as one where we have to search over all Markov, policy, uh, Markov deterministic policies. Let us so, but before we get to that let me make another point. So, suppose we were not looking for Markov deterministic policies, but say history dependent deterministic policies ok. Suppose, suppose the search was suppose we were to optimize not over Markov determin optimize over not Markov deterministic policies, but optimize over history dependent deterministic policies ok. Which means then the optimal cost that we were looking for is let me denote that by j star star of x 0. This would then be the minimum over uh, oh, uh, uh, the minimum over pi in pi h d of the ex of the cost that would come about from that particular policy. Now, 
let me put a small tilde here just to uh, just to distinguish this from uh, from the earlier term and the reason for this this tilde is because is is because now the cost that i get from a history dependent policy would uh, is actually a different expression so this here is going to be the expectation of the terminal the terminal cost plus the cost that you get at in each stage which is a function of the state at that time and the and the action but then the action now is chosen as a function of the entire history so let me write this as mu k of h k of w k comma w k where h k here is the history at time k. The history at time k is simply the sequence of states and actions that have been realized up until time k minus 1 and the state at time k. So, this is your this then becomes the expression when you have a history dependent policy. So, what has changed here is in place of in place of having just the x k which would be your uh, where which is only the current state we now have the entire history present here ok. So, that that has uh, that therefore gives rise to a dis different expression let us call, I have called it j tilde and we when you minimize this over all history dependent policies we get a cost which is j double star of x 0. This here is another way of posing the problem where we are now asking what is the optimal cost you can get if you were to allow for history dependence in your decision rule ok. So, now let us let us try to think of uh, how many what kind of complexity this problem amounts to ok. So, suppose let us let us take a simple case once again. So, suppose we have uh, let me take for simplicity that. So, once again we have a action a is the number of actions b is the number of states the number of possible states the number of elements in your state space. So, the and the question is what is this this quantity pi h d the size of pi h d. So, well the the number of history dependent policies would depend also on uh, on n which is the time horizon. So, let me write the time horizon here n is the time horizon So, let us let us compute this for for various values. So, let us say for example, let us what it, we want to know what this is let us say n equal to 2 for example. So, for n equal to 2 you have 2 decision rules to choose choose from the, there is a decision rule at time 0 and there is a decision rule at time 1. The decision rule at time 0 ha has in that you have a actions to choose from from and you have b b states uh, at which you have to make this choice. So, the number of possible decision rules over there is is once again a raised to b this is at time at time 1 then suppose you then you take uh, the uh, then you take the uh, decision rule at time 2. Now, at time 2 you you know not just the state at time 2, but also the entire history. Now, you have to ask yourself well what is the total number of histories that you have at time 2. The number of histories that you can have is potentially the number of uh, is 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 going to be the number of is the history at time 2 will involve the state at time 0 or is the history at time 1 will involve the state at time 0 and the state at time 1 and the action that you took at time 0. So, the number of histories then is potentially a which is uh, which is the number of actions at time 0 times the number of states at time 0 which is uh, which is the number uh, which is b times the number of states at time 1. 
So, the number of histories at time 1 is going to be therefore, A times B times B which is which is let me write it simply it is A B square. This is the number of possible histories at time uh, at time 1 and we have a choice of A actions one for each possible history right. So, the number of possible decision rules at time 1 is A raised to B A raised A B square. So, this so the total number of policies therefore, can can be as large as this. A times B times A B uh, A, ra A raised to B times A raised to A B square. This is what you get for when the time horizon is 2. Now, when the time horizon is 3, let us let us compute this again for when the time horizon is 3 and the number of decision rules at time uh, at time 0 is, uh, is still uh, A raised to B. Then you have decision rules at time 1 which is A raised to A B square. Then you have decision rules at time 3 uh, at time 2. The decision rules at time 2 uh, you have A actions and the number of histories now is going to be well it will comprise of 2 actions the actions at time 0 and time 1 and the 3 states which is at the state at time 0, the state at time 1 and the state at time 2. So, this is going to be A square B cube. This is the total number of histories uh, that you can have. So, A raised to A square B cube is the number of decision rules uh, at time at time 2. Uh, this entire product taken together gives you the total number of history dependent policies that you can have. So, I do not need to tell you that this, this again can be an extremely large number as uh, in fact, it is much larger than even the number we computed for Markov deterministic policies. So, this therefore, once again puts uh, a, a question on uh, in front of us as to okay, we have posed a problem of Markov decision processes, we saw that it has several ap applications, we looked at a, a very clean application in inventory control, uh, but what is actually the way to solve a problem like this. So, this is something that we now need to address. Okay. So, the, the crux of solving a problem like this, okay, whatever be the class of policies, whether it is uh, whether we are looking for uh, the uh, whether we are looking for Markov deterministic policies or whether we are looking for history dependent deterministic policies or, or randomized policies or any of that, the, the whole idea behind solving any of this is to use what we know about the structure of the problem. We know this, we know this that the cost has this additive structure that there is a terminal cost and then there is a stage wise cost. So, there is a uh, there the, the which means that the cost that you incur over the entire time horizon does not depend does not depend on the specific trajectory that you have followed does not depend uh, uh, does not depend is not very strongly dependent on the trajectory that you have followed over the time horizon. Rather what happens the way you in accrue the cost is that one accrues the cost at each stage. There is a there is a stage uh, at each stage the action that you take and the state that you are in uh, combined with a bit of noise is what tells you the cost that you would accrue in that particular stage. As a result, and the, the total cost that we uh, that we uh, that we accumulate is the sum of all these stage-wise costs. So this this is a crucial part of the structure of a stochastic control problem or a Markov decision processes problem. So we we have to we somehow have to make use of this structure in order to simplify this choice of. Uh, or, or simplify this search of overall over the set of all policies of whatever kind. The other struct, uh, structural element which I have not uh, written over here is is the is is the fact that the the next state which is x k plus one is again given uh, given to it is depends only on the current state which is x k the action we choose in, in the current state and any element of noise. 
which means the, the, the next state st uh, the next state at time k plus 1 does not uh, does not dip, uh, depend any further on the previous states than it does on just x k. So, which means given the x k and the u k and the noise the next state is completely determined. Uh, alternatively given the x k and the u k then the probability distribution of the next state is determined completely determined. One does not need to know the entire history of, of states that has that have occurred in order to in order to determine what the next state is. This again is very conducive uh, to the kind of structure we have in the cost function because here it means that once you get to a certain state you, you get a certain and you take a certain action you get a certain reward. You, it does not matter how you got there and, uh, and uh, it does not uh, it does not matter what has happened previously in the past. This kind of separability or additive structure in the cost function has to be exploited. And what uh, we will see next how this is actually being exploited in order to pr produce a tractable method for computing the optimal solution or the optimal policy for these kind of problems.